Okay, welcome back from summer break. Uh, the book that I read over break was called Positive Discipline. And it's a pretty good book. Sometimes it pertained to our age level of kids or students, and, but sometimes it didn't. But some of the things that I did take from it was learning about behavior. And basically what behavior is, is, is the students behaving a certain way or acting a certain way because they, uh, they want to belong or they want a sense of belonging. And the way they think is the way they act. And sometimes they don't know the right way to go about gaining belong. And one thing it talked about was, was there's four mistaken goals of behavior. One is attention, power, revenge, and assuming inadequacy. And there's a chart that I had Mrs. Hartz pass out to everybody. And it just it's a chart that you should have nearby because why do we want to identify what the goal of behavior is? Is because if we can identify what goal then it's going to be easier or more effective for us to satisfy their needs or wants. So what we have to understand is when we're talking to the student, there's two things going on. There's our behavior of what the child is saying, and then there's the child's behavior or in response to what we're saying. So that's what we have to do. And when we're asking a child, you know, if we want them to do something and they're not doing it, we ask ourselves, what behavior, what goal are they trying to reach? And if we're fearing, feeling irritated or if we're feeling annoyed, then it may be attention. Or if, as you can see in the list, it's got a bunch of them, so I'm not going to go through all of them, but they're all right here. If, if, you're, if you are feeling provoked or challenged or threatened, it might be power. If you're feeling hurt or disappointed, it might be revenge. Or if you're feeling like you want to give up, and you, you can't do that, obviously, but... I, Odds are it's probably assumed inadequacy on the child. So it's easier for us to just immediately cover everything up with anger. We can't do that anymore. We have to give encouragement to, to redirect the behavior. Now, with this encouragement, it's got to come at the right time. It's all about timing. With encouragement, you have to give the child, a student, a cooling off period. Uh, have them leave the classroom or have them leave the dorm room or or do something and then come back later when you both are calm because it's so easy for this teacher to get slipped into the, this anger, drunk with power, acts and there's no heartfelt, there's no real consequence other than the child isn't going to learn anything from it. Uh, and you have to understand mistakes are opportunities for the child to learn and that's something that all of us have to learn. Now. When the child, as you can see, the child's response, if they stop temporarily and then pick it back up, it's attention. If the child is fighting, giving in, thinking you can't get away with it, it's power. Retaliating, revenge. Giving up, once again, assumed inadequacy. So that's the mistaken goals behavior chart, and it's keep it next to your desk so that way you can quickly identify what the behavior or what the goal of the behavior is for the child. And the other thing I want to talk about was encouragement. And like I said, it's got to be given after a cooling off period. It's got to be done with mutual respect. That means you respect the student and they respect you. I mean, it's no longer that we're a student, we're older, or we're the teacher, we're older. Automatically, they're going to respect us. We have to gain their respect just like they have to gain our respect. Now, how do we gain respect? We basically, we, we win cooperation. We show understanding. We express understanding. We ask questions instead of constantly giving them their discipline, giving them everything. we got to get their input so that the way they feel as though they have a say. We no longer can just force it down their throat. We have to ask them opinions. Something else, uh, something in the book that I really liked was a little mathematical thing they brought up too was percentages. If we spend 85% of our time on 15% of the negative, eventually it's all going to be negative. But if we spend 85% of our time on the positive, eventually it will be 100% positive because the negative will be gone. And I'm done.